Hi, this is Shadi. Today I want to discuss the presence of judo in the Olympics. This is something I've been very vocal about. I've debated Jimmy Pedro on this and why it shouldn't be an Olympic sport for many reasons. Now, is the Olympics in itself a bad thing for judo marketing wise, the prestige of the title? Of course not. But there are some things that I personally do not find it aligns with judo, how it is ran today, and also the core values uh, of judo. Many people were asking me, did you watch this? Did you watch the team match? What did you think, guys? I didn't watch. I just kept up on Instagram and just refresh my browser every hour or so just to have an idea what's happening. I did not watch. I kept my word. And uh, today, apparently from where I've seeing and hearing it's apparently have a lot of problems but uh, before i talk about that i make sure you check out my new book a translation of the origins and history of judo by uchi dariohe written in 1903 it is now bilingual in english and modern japanese the link will be in the description and if you cannot find it or it does not ship uh, your the amazon of your country has a copy I put it worldwide so you can access it now back to the topic so I do believe that judo does have a problem uh, I see a lot of people especially on reddit uh, you know a, a negative comment section on reddit you know call me surprised but they say things like he bashes uh, modern judo way too much but on a serious note I don't say that just to bash it I, I genuinely love judo and I genuinely want people to know its full history, the whole arsenal that it has. Uh, a few years ago, a lot of people didn't know a lot about what judo did and what it established. And till this day, every single second, there is someone that is interested and want to start judo. So let's really show what judo is really about. So reason number one why I don't think judo should be in the Olympics at all is just from a logistic standpoint, the world tour. The world tour makes the Olympics absolutely meaningless. You have the same circle of talent fighting each other two to three times a year. And then all of a sudden, because it's an Olympic stadium, it should be very special. Now, you can say uh, it's once every four years. So the preparation is different. The mentality is different. So there is a buildup. I get that. But I've seen proper fights in Paris Grand Slam World Championships that far exceeds the Olympics because A, you have a bigger uh, talent pool. You have people from in the same category from many members in the same country, so not just one. And I, I know about the quota thing, but personally, I think it's unfair for the really talented uh, people, especially uh, Japan and many other countries. So. People who fight each other all the time, if they step up on the Olympic Stadium, it, it's not suddenly all that special. I, like I said, Paris Grand Slam is far more exciting. The World Championship, same thing. So uh, it's not like, for example, football, you have uh, Coppa America, the Euro, and you have all these countries that do not get to meet. But then all of a sudden, a World Cup or the Olympics then all of a sudden, yes, you want to see them collide. You want to see what they can bring. You've watched them separately, and now you get to watch them in one stadium. And yes, that is exciting, but it's not the same for judo. It makes absolutely no sense. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is the Olympics, and I say this with a heavy heart, its values do not align with the judo values. Judo values are about mutual prosperity for self and others, while all I see is make more money and hold the biggest monopoly in the world. That's what I see the Olympics doing. Uh, speaking from experience, I personally reached out to some people and asked for exclusive footage, who of course I was willing to pay um, for Inoue in the Olympics in Athens and in uh, Sydney back in 2000s and I I got the most absurd response ever um, they say that we need to collect them so that takes time and so we will charge you 
something crazy like two thousand dollars or two thousand euros per olympic minute i mean either they're really detached or they don't want me to have them so uh imagine you're doing this and it's your job and then you have to apologize to your wife and kids sorry no house no vacation this year no school year because i want to watch uh, in a way in athens how insane is this so you don't release that footage which in, will result in another problem i will talk about shortly but also jimmy pedro he himself was an olympian he competed in the olympics he won a medal and his friend was actually filming him fighting and he used that footage that he himself filmed to put it in his documentary and they they treated it like a case of bootlegging and they sent him a uh, a bill something crazy well over ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars for the footage that he himself produced and was in it uh, because it's olympic footage and just show you how crazy it is just how greedy and detached it is because he made them money by participating in the games and of course they broadcasted it etc and then he wants to use the footage that he shot and he's in it which is his image so to speak and they charged him plus i mean i don't know what we're dealing with here but it makes no sense also the that monopoly of you get to see it once and then all of a sudden it's gone there's no replay there's no olympic channel you cannot buy olympic games and watch them it's it's disrespectful to the champions they work their entire lives for that one moment to solidify their legacy to cement their names and then you cannot watch a replay so how disrespectful is that i want to go back and see their accomplishment you have people if they let's say retire they start families they want nothing to do with said sport they get erased you know how many olympic champions are absolutely forgotten those who stay relevant on social media on they go out to have another career then we talk about their olympic uh, accomplishment because uh, they're still relevant but everyone else we just tend to forget about them if you notice why is that because because of this stupid thing of i'm not gonna release any replays there is no way you can rewatch an old olympic games uh, i'll show you a snippet of black and white when i'm creating a trailer but that's it meaning they have every single footage of every second that was shot but they choose to hold it and that's a monopoly and if there's anything i hate is monopoly so when it comes to uh, mutual welfare for self and others, this is completely against it. It's very greedy and you're trying to play a monopoly that might have worked in 1920, but now we have judo TV, we have social media, etc. This type of this hoarding uh, mentality simply does not align with most people's values and certainly not, not uh, judo's uh, values. So it, it really angers me when I see this and uh, it's disrespectful to the champions. I want to go back and see the 60s. I want to go back and see the 70s and I want to enjoy them, see how judo genuinely evolved. How else are we going to study and see and look forward to the future? And the second thing and the final uh, reason is, of course, uh, amputating judo, basically. That's the I'm not going to say castrate because it's still a very effective martial arts and you will forever have generations. Starting, uh, I'm going to get to the Shidos but, uh, and what Ono Shohei said and uh, uh, Yonezuka also said recently. But first, let me talk about the leg grabs. Uh, I'm going to kick the dead horse yet again. First, this whole thing with the Soviets and the Russian guys, it's not true. Please stop leaving this in my comments. It's just not true. Let, let's humor this argument for a second and just see how stupid it is. So the argument is they come from a sambo and wrestling background. So they just went in and just pummeled everyone and took, and took all the medals. The Japanese were so jealous and so scared. They removed the leg wraps. Okay, first of all, why did you wait 50, almost 50 years to remove it? Uh, and also, if that's the case, and that's really true, then from 64 to 2010, you would have number one Russia slash Soviet Union, and then all the others. But that's just not the case. Historically, Japan has always been number one in terms of Olympic medals. And number two, it's France. 
Russia is not even close. So this argument of the Russians wanted to, they tried, trust me, they tried, they've done it, but it's not just as the way you think. It's not that black and white. No, that's just not what happened. And uh, the whole thing with the leg grabs, I've had Neil Adams on my channel and I've also recently saw him on Lex Friedman and again told the same story. IOC came to us, your uh, athletes are looking like wrestlers, do something about it or you will be out of the Olympics. First of all, if I was the IJF and they told me your athletes are looking like wrestlers, first of all, I will say, okay, and we all know how big judo is in the Olympics. That's one. So according to Dr. Roddy Ferguson, and kind of, I, I tend to agree with him. He told me they were just, he was just trying to sell you a story to make it kind of acceptable what they did. And personally, I agree. Look at all the matches from the 2000s, from the 90s, the stuff that we have access to. I'm sorry, it never looked like wrestling. And even uh, Dionizuka, when he came out with his video recently, said it never looked like wrestling. And I agree. Do you see a kataguruma? Yes, but the setup, the jacket, the gi, everything makes it all so different. They just wanted something so unique, so, so different. And because it's only upper body and you cannot go below then you'll have these big throws and it's all for viewership basically and ratings so i just want to say this it never looks like wrestling so if you can come and just enforce something so drastic so quickly that means you have a big monopoly that you should not have it's you that needs judo not the ijf that needs the olympics they've got it completely backwards and two it never looked like wrestling so let's just say for a second that uh, what you're saying is true and they did come to you and say that it means that they do not understand martial arts and by extension they should not dictate or have a say uh, of what the rules are correct so this whole thing with the bent over etc it it's just not a thing do, do you have people who historically have avoided gripping and try to look like they're attacking by just going for the legs yes you can see van der geest against inoue uh, you can see um naidan against suzuki which is a complete flop of a fight and yeah so punish the attitude not the technique they did a, a rule set here in front of you in 2010 to 12 which by the way i think it was just a transition because they always wanted to do away with them and, but they couldn't do it at once, so they, so they did this first. And then when people got used to the idea, they removed them completely. That's what I think. Uh, I'm not sure if it's 100% true, but that's just my opinion. And you can see that it emphasizes an upright posture. Now, not Han Sokumake, it should be a Shido. Then I'm fine with this rule set, to be honest, because even Kano wanted a particular attitude. He wanted a natural posture that moves freely rapidly attacks defends and fluent and you it will create beautiful technique and that's what it did now if you have someone who bends over defensively and makes it look like he's going for the legs as some sort of an attack then yeah that person should be punished and those rules are great except for the hansokumake so uh another thing uh, some people i see this comment all the time also judo is 67 throws uh, let go of red grabs get over it uh, stop uh, teiwaza is just four or five techniques with leg grabs let's humor this stupid argument for a second first of all if it's 67 and minus i don't know four or five then it shouldn't make a difference okay then let's let me come up with some erroneous study or erroneous argument that there are a lot of adductor injuries in judo and we should do something about it. The numbers show that there's a lot of athletes with incredible adductor injuries. So, and it seems the main component is uchimata because of that you know, rip when they lift them up and or the ken ken, and a lot of them tend to injure their adductor. So, you know what? Now uchimata is gone. People would lose their mind, and rightfully so. Why? Because it is the technique of judo the one of the essence of judo is that particular technique it's beauty it's it's strength it's it's how picturesque it is and all of a sudden now it's gone 
can you come and say guys it's 67 throws what's one less throw come on get over it no it makes no sense this is what i'm saying is the expression of judo what makes judo it's that relationship from the grip the moment the grip reaches the lapel all the way down to gripping the ankle also grabbing the legs as a system is a way of conducting your judo it's not just a few techniques you can grab the leg in any uh throwing groups you can grab it in and the hip techniques find a way to finish the technique by grabbing the leg hand techniques of course even those that do not involve it like ippon seoenage um kochi makikomi with the sacrificing throws uh, you can grab the legs with all sorts of uh sutemi waza ashi waza ochigari you can grab the leg and finish it's a way of just connecting everything from the grip from the natural stance to gripping throwing and then finishing by going down to the leg and then finishing in newaza it's a complete system you don't have to have it of course but it's a complete system so to say that it's just a few throws get over it no i'm sorry you are wrong and i don't know if if you have some you want to be sponsored by the igf or whatever i don't know but it's just faulty no matter how you look at it whether it's your athletes are looking like wrestlers whether it is dangerous or it is a few throws what's a few throws uh, in minus just get over it no if it's dangerous like kani basami or anything that can cause torsion and rip anything apart then yes because of the athletes and how explosive and strong they're becoming then yeah i'm all for it but if it's not with safety and you just want to dictate an expression even though you know nothing about judo then yeah i have a problem so that monopoly and that uh control that they have for me it makes absolutely no sense and it's them that need judo not the other way around so please get that straight also finally there's the argument and i and i appreciate it and i understand it that some countries have subsidies and funding from their government because they can go to the olympics countries like tajikistan who had a few medals and congratulations of course uzbek etc but that seems to me like an IGF problem, not, not an Olympic problem. I'm not, I don't think the Olympics are genuinely paying the athletes. I understand how prestigious the title is, but also a world championship should also be very prestigious. So with the Judo TV, I'm sure now they're making far more money and hence they should pay their athletes more, not just the editor. So that's what I think. I think it's, a, it's an exertion of control and monopoly that should not be there. Also, the Shido thing, you're you're talking about... Here's why I think Shido game is very abhorrent and quite unethical. Ono Shohei said, it is, it is boring. We trained to fight long, meaning endurance, and also to throw hard. Recently, he said this. And then causing your opponent a Shido or a penalty is boring. It's not just boring, it's unethical because this is what you're basically doing you're not showing your hard work you're not showing your skills you're basically making the other look bad so you can win and i find that very disgusting because it, it reminds me of when i was in architecture school how a lot of them just feed each other the wrong information maybe the wrong dimensions to the terrain and then the project will look off or or uh, giving them any type of thing so they can either be late to the uh, to the actual you know development of the project or simply make them fail or when my cousin went to medical school they would slash tires they would put cheating notes in their bags so they would when they uh, search the bags they would find them and they would get uh, what was it like uh, they would get kicked out of the school it's absolutely abhorrent and this is what shido is you're making him look bad i see fights where just violent gripping and people moving no throw even in, in the judo center of paris where a lot of teams from around the world they come and i hear the coaches giving information etc grip this rip that do this and then the round ends maybe a throw and then he says good job, good job. he's just teaching him the gripping shido game but i didn't fully see it now when i look back i completely see it but imagine japanese are doing that or any you know 
someone like Abe who, who would go out and just wants to throw or Maruyama or Ono that's how it should be I've been in I have saw the All Japan live I saw it live and I know what a proper Shido is you have someone who's gripping dominating the gripping and looking to actually throw while the other cannot keep up with the grips their throws are very ineffective and then they just end up either looking passive because the other one is genuinely trying to throw after many attempts then they get a shido and rightfully so not what we are seeing today someone who can barely throw winning by three shidos because the other one uh, was you know whatever they did with the grips and honestly golden score if it's not a medal match it's pointless just bring back the flags and then people will genuinely fight they will want to show their judo and also it will not exhaust them four or five minutes not ten minutes for the first round and then in the medal matches five minutes regular time or six minutes and then maybe four minutes of golden score and then bring the flags but what's happening now is ridiculous too many rules uh, not enough judo and we're focusing on little details that do not contribute to the bigger picture whatever and honestly that monopoly of the Olympics is just it's, it's crazy and the money that they ask and what they do with their footage it's it's really I, I do not like it at all so I've talked long enough you're still if you're still listening thank you um, check out my book down below this was Shadi thank you for listening